The CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, recently released a report analyzing uh, the costs uh, associated with uh, moving the United States to a single-payer Medicare for All system. And the results are amazing. Uh, so there have been previous uh, studies on this issue in recent years, uh, all of them encouraging, showing that we uh, would actually save more uh, under a uh, Medicare for All system. Uh, that in fact, uh, healthcare spending would go down while everybody would get covered. Uh, the United States currently spends more uh, per person uh, than the rest of the developed world that already has a single payer system in place. And we do that while delivering uh, worse outcomes, which is something uh, that uh, you should know uh, when discussing this issue because Obviously, uh, there's no better case than that single efficiency, uh, combined with the fact that the United States also has, of course, uh, 30 million people uh, plus, uh, I believe, as of right now, as of 2020, I believe it's some 30 million uninsured, and then there's like 54 million, 55 million underinsured. Uh, so, so you've got a lot more uninsured to deliver um uh to deliver uh worse outcomes uh uh while you're spending more than every other country per capita so but the Cong congressional budget office's recent uh report indicates that actually previous reports were underestimating the savings on administrative costs so i'm quoting an article here from common dreams and i'll post this a uh, link at the bottom of the video uh, that quotes, uh, that says here, in the words of researcher Matt Brunig, who is a uh, founder and president of the progressive think tank People's Policy Project, uh, who called the CBO's working paper on the topic more exhaustive than any other recent study on the subject. The new analysis shows that administrative costs under a single-payer healthcare system will be lower than what even the most rabid Medicare for all supporters have traditionally claimed. So how do we uh assess that so when we talk about uh determining the costs uh, assessing the cost of a single payer system we're basically talking about three key bullet points so those being number one how many more units of healthcare services will be demanded and supplied when price barriers are removed uh, so basically uh previous studies on this issue uh most notably the one from 2018 that was uh, funded uh, uh, by a coke-backed uh, think tank, uh, that think tank, uh, that uh, study uh, from the uh, from the Mercata Mercata Center at George Mason University radically underestimated uh, the savings in administrative costs and also from allowing uh, Medicare uh, the empowering the Sec Secretary of Health and Human Services to negotiate drug prices uh, on behalf of Medicare, radically underestimated those savings and then also overestimated uh, the, 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 the increase in costs from utilization. Um, so how much care would be demanded versus how much would be supplied? And I'm um, looking at an article that came out uh, in The Intercept two years ago when this was a new study. And I want to quote this excerpt here. Um, Himmelstein and Woolhandler also claim that Blayhouse grossly, oh, Blayhouse is the economist who undertook the study on behalf of the Koch brothers. And now you got to keep in mind, this is from the Koch brothers. So presumably the intent of this undertaking this project uh, was to debunk and di discredit the savings uh, that would be tied to a Medicare for All system, right? So with that caveat in mind, uh, the result was, and I quote the Intercept's reporting on the study at the time, Blayhouse grossly overestimates how much extra care would be utilized as a result of expanding insurance coverage. 
using Blade House's projections, they note that he is essentially arguing that once every American is covered, there will be 100 million additional doctor visits and several million more hospitalizations each year. But Himmelstein and Woolhandler say that's wildly off the mark. From their written analysis, there just aren't enough doctors and hospital beds to deliver that much care. Doctors are already working 53 hours per week, and experience from past reforms tells us they won't increase their hours, nor will they see many more patients per year. So instead of a huge surge in utilization, more realistic projections would assume that doctors and hospitals would reduce the amount of unnecessary care to those who are currently not getting what they need. So in other words, uh, wealthy people who 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 do, do uh, who regular regularly engage in elective visits, you know, non-essential services. Uh, there, uh, from past experiences when we've done reform, uh, the the service provided to those uh, to the wealthiest patients basically d dropped. There was a reduction in the util in the utilization of unneeded elective care by wealthier patients and delivery of more care to sick people who needed it. And this is going off of uh, the the time that we went to Medicare, which um, to quote The Intercept again, citing between 1964 before Medicare and 1966, the year when Medicare was fully functioning, there was absolutely no increase in the total number of doctor visits in the US. Now you gotta remember, this is significant because uh, Medicare was when millions of previously uninsured seniors got coverage, right? So we're, we're expanding the, 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 the demand pool uh, by millions of people here. And uh, what happened was Americans averaged 4.3 visits per person in 1964, pre-Medicare, uh, and 4.3 vis uh, visits per person in 1966, post-Medicare. So the same number. So, and that's due to, again, the counterbalance between the number of visits by poor seniors going up versus those by the healthy and wealthy patients going down. So... Uh, that study, that that first one concluded that Medicare for all, uh, given all of these factors, you know, this uh, would basically, you know, a reduction in administrative costs uh, and, uh, you know, more streamlined administrative process. Now, now that you're uh, eliminating, obviously, uh, certain administrative functions, uh, along with empowering Department of Health and Human Services to negotiate uh, drug prices on behalf of of the, the Medicare population, which would be everyone. And then plus uh, the increasing demand, uh, that coke back study, that coke funded study, which was uh, undertaken presumably to undercut uh, the, 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 the momentum behind uh, Medicare for all idea, found that it would save conservatively two trillion dollars right so that was the the mercatus study uh from uh from the center uh the mercatus center at george mason university that was in early 2018 that was followed by the uh, university of massachusetts and her study at the end of 2018 which found that no actually uh medicare for all would save uh on aggregate 5.1 trillion dollars once you account for all those same factors which brings us to the latest uh from uh from the cbo from the congressional budget office which is again matt brunick has cited as the most exhaustive uh undertaken on the subject and uh, in its analysis, the CBO looked at several distinct single-payer designs and determined that four such systems, fully implemented by 2030, would save anywhere from $42 billion to $743 billion that year alone. So the name of this article that I'm looking at, that uh, again, I will uh, cite uh, the link to below the video, it's... Uh, Seems like a good policy. This is the headline. CBO shows Medicare for All could cover everyone for $650 billion less per year. So that's that's what we're talking about. So in this case, 
the additional savings come from the streamlined administrative costs. So obviously doctors uh, would get paid uh, the, a lower rate, uh, which the Medicare rate uh, that we pay doctors is lower than the rate that uh, private insurers, uh, that non-Medicare patients, those who have to go through the marketplace uh, pay. Um, but in this case, uh, the administrative services this is the first study to take into account a broader context, which, which has a more comprehensive, uh, clear-eyed view of, the, uh, of, the, of exactly how much more streamlined administrative services and fees would be once you accounted for uh, the, the banishment of certain... Uh, certain practices, certain administrative functions that would just frankly be obsolete. So uh, I'm quoting the article here uh, from Common Dreams. Medicare for All advocates have historically pointed towards the 2% administrative costs of traditional Medicare as what we should expect in a Medicare for All system. Critics of this view have typically argued, among other things, that Medicare's low administrative costs are a mirage driven by the fact that their per-enrollee administrative costs are being divided by disproportionately large per-enrollee healthcare utilization. This rebuttal never really made sense. Private Medicare Advantage plans have a similarly sick and elderly enrollment population, but managed to spend a whopping 13.7% of their revenue on, on administrative expenses. The CBO's analysis, which starts with the current Medicare administrative costs and then determines how each element of those costs would go up or down in a single-payer system, seems to put this claim to bed once and for all. Now, here's where here's the, the real interesting part. Indeed, the CBO finds that the current Medicare administrative costs that are often touted by advocates are actually higher than the administrative costs you would expect in a single-payer system because a large share of those costs are tied up in tasks like eligibility determination and collection of Medicare B, Medicare Part B premiums that would no longer exist in the Medicare for All system. So this is the first time, this is the first study that has fully accounted for all the changes and all the savings uh, that, that, that could be realized under a Medicare for All system in a more streamlined, simplified, uh, 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 in, uh, uh, ad administrative uh, process. So uh, what this means is, uh, Brunig said, is that other studies estimating the effects of a single-payer system on administrative costs are missing hundreds of billions of dollars of savings per year by failing to account for these obsolete administrative uh, processes that would just be totally irrelevant. You understand? It would You would basically streamline, you would simplify the whole process under Medicare for All with regards to administrative costs. You would eliminate a lot of costs, quite frankly. Uh so some great news uh, because this is something that uh, we need to uh, be incorporating into our arguments, uh, proponents of Medicare for All. We have been actually uh, underestimating just how much uh, more cost effective uh, a Medicare for All system would be given these additional savings. So once you account for the elimination of task el eligibility determination, uh, you, everyone would be eligible, so there would be no need to 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 have uh, to engage in the practice of eligibility determination and collection of Medicare Part B premiums. Once you account for it, no, we're gonna this these programs won't exist. You understand? It's gonna be so much simpler. It's gonna be more streamlined. You actually end up on the aggregate saving even more. Not to mention the cost, the savings in in again allowing HHS to negotiate drug prices because obviously at that point once you have one uh, consumer that being the federal government negotiating prices that's going to be result in a windfall as well not to mention that history shows that when we moved to Medicare for all in 1966 uh, there was no uh, expansion literally it was a net equal uh, uh, amount of of supply and demand uh, that was uh, th th that still resulted from an expansion of millions of seniors getting covered uh, through Medicare. So uh, very promising, very encouraging. This is definitely something that we need to, uh, again, 
uh, integrate into our arguments when we're making the case against the inhumane, draconian, for-profit, uh, you know, profit-centered system that we have now that, that's centered, again, not on care, but on profit, making profit for these, you know, uh, unnecessary, mafioso, greedy middlemen that are just, you know, that have a conflict of interest in, in providing care uh, when they can be making money and when they have an obligation under the law to maximize profits for shareholders, as all corporations do. So uh, there you have it. Medicare for all saves more than uh, even the progressives uh, ever realized.